Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter Cliver Parish this morning, and thank you all for joining us today for this sacred celebration. We are all part of the body of Christ, so please take a moment to greet and welcome your brothers and sisters in Christ seated around you. Today's celebration is all about those who are called. Amos the prophet, the 12 apostles, and us, all who have been baptized. What do we have in common? Amos and the 12 responded to God's call within the context of their everyday lives. And us, perhaps today is a good day to pray to God for the grace to hear God's call and respond to it in our own everyday lives. Please turn off your cell phones or put them in the silent mode during the celebration of the sacred mass. Our priest celebrant today is Father Marco. Please rise and let us sing our gathering song, Come Follow Me. Come follow me and live. Do not be afraid. Believe and trust in me. Your faith will give you strength. Leave all your fears behind you. Let your heart be free. For I will be your guide. Oh, come and follow me. Come follow in these footsteps. I'll lead you gently home. No shelter, food, nor money will you need upon this road. Come follow me and live. Be afraid, believe and trust in me. Your faith will give you strength. Leave all your fears behind you. Let your heart be free, for I will be your guide. Oh, come and follow me. Come walk across the water, place all your faith in me. Cast all your doubts behind you to the wind and raging sea. Come follow me and live. Do not be afraid, believe and trust in me. Your faith will give you strength. Leave all your fears behind you. Let your heart be free. For I will be your guide. Oh, come and follow me. I'm not sure. I... In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Come and follow me. Beautiful, beautiful song this morning to, to begin the, the Mass. Come and follow me and trust in me, also says the Lord. So uh, today we are invited to, to deepen into those words because that is precisely a message that the Lord wants to deliver to us. Let us then prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask that Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you. show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to serve after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated to, to listen attentively to the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was the shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Lord, let us us and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times, to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory. We who first hoped in Christ, in him you also, who have heard of the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Holy Gospel 
according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. Last uh, week, we were listening to the Word of God, and um, we heard that um, Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, was called by the Lord, and he was uh, 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 advised by the Lord to the people of Israel that he needed to be present as prophet. Correct? Do you remember the last weekend? No. Well, at least, do you remember when you heard the gospel that nobody is prophet in his own land? Okay, you remember that part. Okay, so today we continue with the confidence that the Lord is trusted in the people, in the people, in the chosen people, and is inviting them uh, to, to work in a mission, in a mission of the, the gospel, the, the, the new uh, news of uh, salvation. In this case, in the Old Testament, we have heard that someone that is not really professional, that doesn't follow the profession of the family, because in the past, actually, the family was very important to follow the business, the family business. If they raise cattle, the sheep, uh, they, all of them, the family was dedicated to that. And, uh, and we have many last names according to the, the activity that they were uh, exercising. But it happens that the Amos is, is not a prophet and is not a son of a prophet. It's not, it's not from that line. And he is just a sycamore dresser. And he is called by the Lord to profess, to prophesy to the people of Israel, the north. And so, he says, who am I? Well, I don't know who you are. You are someone that I recognize, that I trust, and I want you to go and prophesy. And certainly, we do not know the content of the, of the prophetic message. Eventually, he is going to profess, prophesy against injustices. Amos is the harsh of all the prophets that you can read in the scriptures because it drills to your heart. He drills, the message drills to your heart, and, and you really figure it out that it's against injustices. And so um, uh, the prophet, the Lord trusts a man that is not professional, that is not for the professional line of uh, prophesizing um, the injustices and, and the problems that existed in, in the contemporary time of Israel. And then we hear that also um, Jesus in the gospel trusts the, the, the apostles. And he says, well, you go also, go to uh, preach what you have seen, what you have learned from me. I said, but we are not professionals. I'm a fisherman. I'm a collector of taxes. We are sinners. Yes. And yet Jesus also trusts them. Today, the Lord is trusting you and me 
to send, to give the message to the people. It's a missionary sending. And if you pay attention, in every single mass, there is a sending of the people. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not like, thank you, God, Lord, for your blessing. No. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing, because I'm now going out to spread what I have listened and I, what, what I have received here in the Eucharist. So you are not professional, right? You may, may not have studied a lot of theology, and yet, in your heart, you have a lot of catechesis. You know God, okay? But what is important, um, uh, what we have in the, uh, in the gospel today, is that Jesus tells the disciples, do not take a bag with you, a carrying bag, not a second tunic. Okay, you can wear sandals as opposed to being without shoes, I guess. But, uh, 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 okay, but don't carry anything with you because you need to trust more in me. And that's what I said in the, the beginning of the Mass. The Lord is trying to invite in us um, through at least the, the opening song, trust in me, trust in the Lord. And it's essential for us because in order for us, okay, we are not professional. We do not know deep, high theology, and yet we know the Lord. We are called to be sent to a missionary um, uh, activity. And the activity that we are called to, to spread is the good news, to take Christ with you. You may say, um, the excuse of uh, uh, the prophet Amos. Well, I'm not dedicated to give to teach catechism. Let the catechist do that in the church. Yes, it's true. I am not like the priest that who study theology. Yes, it's true. I only bring my children here, and that's it. Well, what is there is a mission that um, the Lord is telling the disciples. Cure the sick. Uh, visit the people. Show who Jesus is, in other words. It's not about you. It's about Jesus, by the way. And so, uh, and do not carry many bags. The reason is that uh, we don't want to go to the missionary uh, activity. It's because we carry many bags with us. And so today, we are called to make an examination of conscience, so to speak to figure out what is what deprive us from being missionaries. And we don't have to go to the other side of the world to do missionary activity. No, no, no. What is, after going here after Mass, after uh, being out from this place, what is the mission that I have? And that has to do with uh, the uh, daily activities that we uh, do um, uh, regularly. And so, as wife, as husband, as mother, as father, as child of, as student, as worker, we have plenty of activities. But one of the things that we need to do is to examine our life, to see how much, how much we are carrying in that bag so that we are not able to do that missionary activity. Normally, uh, for many young people, um, the biggest uh, obstacle is, or the big bag to carry is greed. As we are getting older, we figure it out that it's not much <laughs> greed, but uh, we carry a lot of things that makes our life less possible. I was watching uh, a movie uh, the other, uh, la not last night, but the other day. And um, it's interesting because it's, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but one line that caught my attention was when one uh, lady that is not young, but eventually she got wise. And uh, it's, uh, one line that this lady said is like, life is something that passes by when we are busy planning, making many plans. 
That's life. So I, I, I say, well, that's, that's great line because life is when I uh, is passing or, or Jesus is, is passing by. I don't recognize him because I am busy doing other things. My personal busyness. And so while for the young people, greed is very important to control because that fills the bag of their sacks and uh, uh, that fills the, the, the sacks uh, of their pockets or whatever you want to call it. So they are not much um, paying attention to what they receive and they cannot share. For the older people, it's, it's, uh, it's something that we are making plans all the time. We are worried about our health, which is fine. Don't take me wrong, okay? We are worried. But we are so much worried that we are stuck. We are paralyzed, and we do not do much activity of charity. The measure that Jesus is telling us requires first also an examination of conscience of the graces that we receive. In general, and that applies for the young people as well as for the old. Praise be the Father. We have heard in the second reading. Praise be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he has given us all the graces in that person. In Jesus Christ. But how? How? And then we continue reading that beautiful uh, uh, hymn, because it's a, a hymn, because he chose me, he chose you to be holy and blameless in his sight. To be holy and blameless. God chose you. So what are your concerns then? If God chose you already, what are your concerns? What are you putting that, uh, putting that much in the back that doesn't allow you even to taste, to flavor that grace, the holiness? Have you paid attention at least? Have you paid attention how holy you are? Well, <laughs> it's an inter interesting question, no? How holy am I, Lord? And probably you are going to say no. And you are right. And you are right. We say, no, it's not possible. Holy, only the people that are in heaven. Well, I tell you, holy are the people who have the grace and the openness to receive God. Now, if we profess, actually, when we receive God literally through the Eucharist, we say, I'm not worthy. Oh, no, Lord, I'm not worthy. But that's the end? No. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. Now, do you believe that you become healed, that you are healed when you receive the Eucharist? Do you believe that it's part of your holiness? Do you understand that through baptism, you became holy as sinners that we are. And yet, through Jesus Christ, before the Lord, he's presenting you, Mary, you, Joseph, I don't know the, your name. He says, I present to you, Lord, this child, and he's holy. That's what Jesus is doing for us. Are you able to taste, to flavor and that is life. That is life also. Yes, we are worried about uh, decaying body, and we have to put uh, some medicine and all the aches that we have. Yes, we are worried about finances too. Yes, uh, that's for the young people. They want to build uh, the, the life to see how they are going to strive uh, during uh, life uh, to, be, to live a better condition. Yes, I agree. Don't tell me wrong. It's not an opposite, but we shouldn't neglect the grace that we receive from God. Only bringing that integration 
of grace and the goods that God, the Lord offers to us, material goods, only then we are going to be capable to say, yes, Lord, I can be a missionary, a missionary a disciple, your disciple, Lord. And I can bring Jesus, the good news, to others. Because if you pay attention, it's not only the material things that give happiness. It helps. But also, it's necessary the spiritual good to be totally holy as a with a, a w w h holy and that is holy with h okay that is holiness and so that is the presence of the lord and that brings fulfillment to the activity of the mission after we go out from this place the Lord trusts in you. The Lord counts on you. Do you trust in the Lord? That is what usually makes it step back. Do you believe that you are in the right path to holiness? So we need to give space. That's what the Lord says to the disciples. Do not take money with you. Do not take uh, uh, two sandals. A lot of underwear, so to speak, when we travel. I don't know you guys, but uh, travel, we pack so many things. Not counting the cosmetics, all this, and uh, I mean, I'm not familiar with that. But uh, uh, the, the, the makeup and those things uh, uh, that women are so essential. It's essential. And you say essential. And so, yes, I mean, when you're traveling, you know how much you pack. But be aware. That when we are living, while we are walking in this journey of life, we should trust more in the Lord. Because what makes us beauty, beautiful before the Lord is the Lord himself. He is the one who is presenting us to God, the Father. He says, look how beautiful child is this. Yes, needs a probably here and there fixes the hair and things like that. Yeah, but look. In my eyes, this child is so precious. It's for you, Lord. I offer, I offer this child to you. And that is you, each of you. That's the gift. Praise be the Lord of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of Jesus. Because through Jesus, he made us holy. And he presents us before the Lord to be holy and blameless. Do you believe that? We need to believe it. We need to embrace it. Only in that way, we are going to take the courage and to say, yes, this is my life. This is my happiness. This is something that I enjoy. And I want you to share. I wanted to share with you. And that's why the disciples were successful in their mission. Because they trust in the Lord. May the Lord then help us with the uh, grace of the Holy Spirit so that we may be able after this Mass to be missionary disciples the disciples that are needed in the mission of home the domestic church especially with our children with our parents with uh, the work that whatever the atmosphere that surrounds us and we may be able to say that Jesus Christ is the Lord and our Savior Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, 
and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the love of God, let us present our needs and the needs for the whole world. That the prayers and sacrifices of the consecrated religious bear great fruit for the church and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all victims of human trafficking be freed and those who enslave them be converted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the diverse people of our community cherish one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Josh Elwell, Michelle Lowry, and Leticia Gonzalez, may our Lord in his mercy bless them today and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Jeremy Sweeney, Ron Andrews, John Badalich, and Barbara Carata, that they experience the resurrection of Christ into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and all in need of healing, especially Yolanda Rogers, that they receive grace and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, and await the kingdom, especially Roberto de las Alas and Joan Ireland, that they find rest from their labors and peace in the loving embrace of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, they hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, into your hands we commend our petitions. Receive them and transform our hearts so that we may respond to you with true, with true trust and we love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our music during the presentation of the gifts is One Bread, One Body.
and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. down your spirit upon them that do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer one another a sign of peace. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter in the Lord, 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 
meaning him is servant song. What do you want of me? Cheese! 
ministers of the Eucharist, please come forward. Let us pray. <clears throat> Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Next weekend, we will have the opportunity to give to the National Needs Combined Collection. Your donations will assist the Catholic Communication Campaign, the Black and Indian Home Missions, the Catholic University of America, and the Catholic Home Missions Appeal. Further details are in this weekend's bulletin. Envelopes are available at the doors. Thank you for your generosity. We are pleased to announce that our parish is starting a young adult choir. Rehearsals begin this Wednesday, July 14, at 6.30 p.m. in the parish center. Please see the bulletins for details. The Knights of Columbus are hosting a blood drive in the West Hall until 1.30 p.m. today. Please see the bulletin or our website for details on how to schedule your life-saving appointment online. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Thank you. Our closing hymn is City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great
just turn the light into day.